made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Close for Cairo, Dr. Barbara Eaton's 56-day chiropractic boot camp, Moveball University, The Black Diamond Club, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, Dr. Alok Trevetti, Universal Traction Systems, Vantage Point Marketing, Element Mattresses, Imaging Services, Zingit Solutions, Cairo Thin, Dr. Peter Goldman's Zone School of Healing, and Everest Chiropractic Boot Camp. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 64 of Cairo Hustle. It's 10 day. I'm going to start that over. Hey guys, welcome to episode 64 of Cairo Hustle, and today it's Clash of the Titans. I am your co-host, Luke Millette. Here's your host, Jim Chester. So today we had a chance to interview my mentor in the podcast arena. His name is Dr. Ed Osborne. If you guys want to learn about this laptop lifestyle and this uh, men of iron that he started, stay tuned. So Ed, what is your chiropractic story and what influenced you to become a chiropractor? Um, great question. So I always love starting a podcast with an um, by the way. Uh, so here's the thing is I don't have like a really sexy, uh, chiropractic story. Like a lot of other docs or celebrity docs out there. Um, I got into chiropractic because of a girl. So my wife, uh, you know, we, we were in, uh, Ontario, Canada. She had applied actually to become a chiropractor and I was actually working at a car rental company. I was like the night manager for Hertz at the airport in Ottawa at the time. And we ended up moving when she got accepted or actually she was on a waiting list for CMCC, which is the chiropractic college in Toronto. So she and I actually moved just on the, on the, you know, purely positive mental focus that she was actually going to get in. And she didn't get in that year. And it was actually a good thing that she didn't get in that year, but we moved our lives up, uprooted and moved our world so that we could, she could be a come like chiropractor. And I got a job down there. I was working. It ended up to eventually make a long story short. She was, a, she was accepted to Palmer West. So we moved across the, across the country and, uh, the next year and she started there and, you know, basically the only way I could stay inside of the inside the country legally was to go to school as well. So I did my undergrad in the States, fell in love with chiropractic and with a chiropractor. And the next thing you know, it was the best decision I've ever made in my life. That's pretty cool, man. I never knew that you uh, didn't go to this. How do I say you didn't go to school to go to school. You, 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 uh, you went to school because Karen was going to go to school. I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, I was I was a late bloomer, you could say. I didn't even start my undergrad till I was 27. Wow, so you kind of uh, mistakenly got into the chiropractic profession. <laughs> I fell into it, but I say I kind of fell into it, but I fell in love with it at the same time. That's cool. So I have a bit of a silly question for you, but just in case there are people out there who don't know, what makes you unique in the chiropractic world? Um... So I, maybe I can answer that two ways. I mean, I think I was really unique in the chiropractic space, like when I was a chiropractor, because I was a pro, like I practiced for 13 years, and I think I was really unique when I was a when I was in practice because of the the dynamic that Karen and I had. And maybe maybe that isn't a u- unique thing to a lot of people, but Karen and I practiced alongside each other in an open adjustatorium style. We had a very large family practice, um, pediatric practice. Um, and I thought that that gave us a really unique, that was our unique factor was Karen and I, and the way we played off each other, um, when we were together in the second part of that answer would be that the uniqueness of it is that I, I've stepped out of practice. Uh, if people know my story or don't know my story, you know, I had one of those things where doctors do get sick too. And I got sick back in 09, had some real challenges in, in 2011 with surgeries and things like that and complications. And I've basically, now I'm a self-taught online entrepreneur, uh, marketer. Some people call me a marketer. And so that's maybe kind of the unique thing is that I was this guy who was in practice, just like a lot of doctors who are listening today, but out of survival and necessity, I created something else, which is, you know, helping doctors now create that ripple effect and really helping them help not just hundreds of people in their practice each week, but hundreds of thousands of people globally. 
Yeah, and you know, one of those things I found that you did, Ed, is you started teaching uh, DCs and uh, other people how to do podcasts. How did how did you spark yourself with that interest? You know, there's this guy named John Lee Dumas, right? So everyone knows of John Lee Dumas or possibly, you know, the entrepreneur on fire. And so part of the process, that transition, you know, that transformation um, was I started listening to him and and just listening to the inspiring stories that he tells and all, you know, interviewing all of these people who were making it online. This was years ago. And I was listening and I'm going like, man, it doesn't seem that hard. Like if John Lee Dumas can do this, I can do this. Right. Like I just had this, this feeling and it turned out, um, I bought his program. So it was the first online program I'd ever purchased. And when I bought his program, I went through and I created and launched my podcast, which is the chiropractic philanthropist. And everyone told me it was the worst name ever because no one could even say it. Uh, But it turned out to be the best thing ever. And uh, so that podcast, we still, I think we're we're well over 600,000 listens on the podcast now after a few years and 300 interviews of of entrepreneurs, best-selling authors and, and doctors. And I just had doctors who were reaching out to me and asking me like, how do you do this? Like, how, how did you start your podcast? And I just decided, well, maybe this is something that I need to help Ox with. So I created my own podcast course. This is mul- multiple years ago. Um, it was basically, you know, from step one is to like, how do you use this inside of your office to gain influence and uh, how to be an authority and how to uh, have conversations with people, use it to network, a podcast to network and open doors in your community to other healthcare professionals and build relationships, um, how to educate and retain your patients through podcasting. All of that was in, embedded inside the course and it was a big hit. So that's kind of where I, where it all came from. So after 300 episodes, I'm curious, how many doors has it opened for you? <laughs> I like to say I have a million dollar Rolodex, put it that way. <laughs> and um, I mean, I could, I could say, I could ask you the same question, Jim. I mean, it's like you, you've literally, you know, done the same thing with Cairo Hustle. It's like, it's built a network for you, but also, you know, what's that cliche? They say your network is your net worth and, or something like that. So it's, it's been a pretty crazy wild ride. Yeah. So Tell us some of your favorite mantras, quotes, and words of wisdom that really keep you fired up about what you do. Man, um, so I'm a big fan of, uh, who is it? Who is it that I'm a big fan of lately? Well, everyone knows I love Russell Brunson, right? I mean, I mean, and so he doesn't really have any quotes or mantras, but I would say that I, what I love about Russell is his truth that he's just a real person. Um, And so if you ever follow him, and I suggest that all chiropractors follow Russell, by the way, because he's, he is a incredible marketer, but he markets with his, with his heart and, and with purpose. Um, There's no, nothing cohesive or about what he does and um, just a very real person. And so if people don't know who, you know, listening, know who Russell is, he's the creator of uh, ClickFunnels software um, helps a lot of doctors actually too, and um, I think they do anywhere between 100 to 150 million a year. I mean, it's a pretty incredible story just to hear his story. So I would say Russell is is someone that I follow, someone who I, you know, you could say is is a mantra in his in himself. The other person is um, is Garrett J. White. He's he's really transformed my life, my marriage, my business. Uh, he has warrior. Um, so wake up warrior it is. And I know that he's helped a lot of chiropractors, a lot of doctors also help, help them, uh, better their marriages and and their relationships with their children, but also better their businesses and, and their bank account. Um, and you know, both of those people, if, if there was a mantra they have, it's, it's about really just being truthful and being honest. So that would be the mantra. Yeah, and I think uh, just like you, Ed, uh, a lot of the reasons that those guys are such uh, dominating forces in the field that they they work in is because they know how to build a good team around themselves. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I would agree 100%. Yeah. And, you know, I, I love Russell's story about how he became like a state wrestling champion, how he, uh, 
would uh, study tape and then he'd practice and practice and practice with his dad until he became the best wrestler he could make himself. And then he did that with business. He did that with college. And now he has a whole group of people that are funnel hacking and creating funnels and, you know, doing all types of awesome stuff and teaching guys like you that teach other people that, you know, teach people like myself. And the next thing we know, we've taken one guy's big, massive idea and we've taken that to the, you know, multiple channels of influence and gotten so many people, you know, effectively helping different industries that didn't have that type of leverage before. Yes. Yes. I mean, Russell is, um, yeah, Russell is, has created a real, a real culture. Well, he says it himself. I mean, it's inside of their branding and their marketing is they've, they've created a real culture around what they do. And I think, you know, that's one of the things that, that's why I think a lot of chiropractors are, are attracted to someone like Russell um, is because I think I feel in a lot of our marketing, whether you know your marketing or not, speaking to doctors right now, is that um, you're building culture in your community. You're building culture inside of your practice. Um, and if you're not doing that, maybe more with more intention, you should be doing that. But that's really where the success comes. You know, we always wonder, like, how do I increase retention, new patients, all those things. It really comes around build, uh, uh, building that culture and that movement in your practice. Yeah, and then you uh, mentioned Garrett J. White, and I know you did uh, Wake Up Warrior, and now you do Men of Iron. Uh, do you want to talk about how that may have influenced you to get to this position with Men of Iron? You know, it's it's actually really simple. Um, so, yes, I, I'm a graduate of uh, Warrior Week, so if anyone knows of w- Wake Up Warrior and, you know, what they do, they, they help businessmen who are mar- married businessmen get to, uh, to a, you know, the next level, you could say, uh, in their in in those different domains of you know body being balanced in business, so I did uh, Warrior Week 20. So I was a graduate graduate of that quite a intense experience. Uh, X1, which was a 36 hour intense experience, and went back the next year, did Week 40, and then next thing I know, I'm actually in their certified trainer program, and I did that and completed it uh, June of this year, along with uh, I think there's only been about 40 maybe 50 graduates so far. Um, and so from that, I birthed Men of Iron. Uh, Men of Iron is kind of my, my teaching of the warrior doctrine in my way, but for, I kind of describe it as a, it's an elite group of male or men who are chiropractors. So it's kind of like our warrior, but for chiropractors. And we're a very small uh, brotherhood. We're only, there's, there's 20 men in the group, but we're very tight. Um, we meet up every three months and, um, unlike warrior, which is like 20,000 guys. I mean, it's just a different experience. And the reason why I actually started, it's really selfish actually, if you think about it. The reason I started Men of Iron was so that I could coach these men and lead them um, to help them lead themselves. But also because I knew that by teaching, and I think docs will hear this a message in this for themselves too, is I knew that by teaching it, uh, it's very different than learning, you know, like the doctrine or learning, um, from someone, once you start to teach something, it takes it takes everything to a whole different level of of depth of knowledge for you, and that's why I started Men of Iron. Actually, what do you think the chiropractic landscape might look like if more doctors took your podcast training protocol and started podcasts of their own? It's you know I've been I've been talking about this for two years at least is that the possibility is that it's it's almost unimaginable it's almost indescribable could you imagine if you went to itunes spotify stitcher radio google play and you searched any topic and whatever you topic you search on those which essentially all of those are search engines just like google by the way if you search the topic and you could not help but find a list of just like page one, page two, they are all podcasts, audio podcasts by chiropractors. Imagine what that could do for our profession. You know, we talk about our, our profession being marginalized, and, and that is because it is. But if, if we want to become mainstream, then we just need to be everywhere. And, and so I think I, I would encourage doctors to really consider what that might be, what that might look like for them if they could have something like that where someone goes to one of those channels, they search a specific topic and they find that doctor. And you have to be okay with the fact that that doctor 
you know, like their podcast, someone might listen to it and they might go see another chiropractor because it's not always about the dollars and cents and that is not always the way we measure ROI. There's also emotional ROI. Like how does it, how do, how does it feel to be fulfilled when someone hears your message halfway around the world but they go and find chiro- the light of chiropractic because of you? Like we have to be okay with that. Yeah, we can't create content for selfish reasons always. And I think that that's what everybody looks at when they start creating something like uh, an audio audience is they think that it's supposed to make them, you know, right away dollars and cents when really what it does is it leverages you into the marketplace with the barrier of entry uh, system that teaches people who you are and why you're important. But not only that, it helps you build, like you said early on, that network of people that otherwise you wouldn't have access to, but because you paid attention to them and your behavior said, hey, I want to make you cool with my show, then now we can be friends and now you build a relationship and that the really the channel of that is endless. It's giving. It's all about giving and giving back. And it's the easiest way that you can give back. And it's without writing a check. Like, I mean, it's, I, I don't know, like lately, I've, and maybe this is kind of, I'm going to go off riff on off topic here for me. but i believe there's almost this this almost this universe i i do believe in karma there's some sort of universal law where um you know if you put something out there that's just for the purpose of like helping other people that it comes back to you in another way so contra cont- i always kind of like say this contribution leads to um capital like it truly does yeah, and I, I know another spinoff of uh, both these uh, projects you did in between Sandwich in the Middle was Laptop Lifestyle. How did that formulate uh, in between the two? Um, so the, here's the interesting thing, and, and, he, and maybe maybe some, some docs who are listening to this who are creating online content or want to can take something from this is that, so I created this first program, this first product or service, which was a digital product, which is our podcast training course. Now from there... It became very successful. And then doctors started messaging me and asking me, hey, how do you create an online course? <laughs> They're like, how do you create it and how do you market it? How, how would that even work? I would like to do that too. That's where the laptop lifestyle was actually born from. Um, and and this, is, this is important too, is it's, it's, it was created out of results and experience. So we had results, like we, we had like, I, I, won't, I won't throw out numbers, but we did a lot of sales in just three days. And then from that experience and those results, like experience meaning like we actually did it. So there's, it drives me crazy right now that there's so many people who are experts in social media, experts in creating digital courses, experts in creating funnels, experts, 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 but they don't have any results, nor do they have any experience to show for it. Um, and so Laptop Lifestyle is all based on experience like so as i find things that actually work and i just basically document everything that i do and i teach it back to the docs who are inside of our program um it's it's all real documentary style very grassroots uh not so polished in terms of all of our courses some as some of our course content is and some of it isn't we have doctors in the program who are doing anywhere from five hundred dollars a month online to five thousand dollars a month online to uh we have a doc doing um somewhere around 110 to 120 thousand dollars a month online so it's 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 a pretty fun and exciting program to to be part of you've made it to cairo hustle sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession this week's episode is brought to you by close for cairo dr barbara eaton's 56 day chiropractic boot camp move all university the black diamond club legacy wealth management Posture Screen, Dr. Alok Trevetti, Universal Traction Systems, Vantage Point Marketing, Element Mattresses, Imaging Services, Zingit Solutions, Cairo Thin, Dr. Peter Goldman's Zone School of Healing, and Everest Chiropractic Boot Camp. Let's hustle. And on top of all that, I don't want to like get like stick you with numbers, but how many people have gone through and learned how to do podcasts because of your influence out there? I'm, you know what, some, I, I know inside the podcast training course, like we have a closed Facebook group. So um, I know we have over 350 members in there. So that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of chiropractors learning how to podcast. But here's the crazy thing is we also have cardiologists in the, in the course. We have optometrists. 
We have um, podiatrists, uh, dentists, uh, psychologists. Um, so it's not exclusive to chiropractors alone, um, but there is a lot of people out there who have taken that course. I, I couldn't even guess. And even, you know, being a mirror to myself, I was a part of your early trainings and actually it took me two years before I said, let's hit the, let's hit the go button. <laughs> here's the, here's the crazy thing about it is that podcasting is just as relevant today as it was back then, isn't it? I mean, how, and, and it's still, it's actually still not even close to the point where you would say that you're no longer an early innovator by creating a, a podcast. Like it, we're just on the cusp. Yeah, I think that, you know, you got, you know, a jump start on everybody, gave everybody like the, 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 the cool ticket or the, the, you know, you threw the party for all the cool people that showed up on time. But, uh, you know, it's, it, we're not anywhere near like the, the threshold of like too many podcasts yet or niches being like, you know, dominated. It's crazy, too, because like people will say, um, well, maybe even someone who's listening to your podcast right now, they might be thinking, I didn't even, I've never even heard of podcasts till I heard of Jim's podcast, you know, Jim and Luke, I didn't know. Um, and so there's still people who are discovering iTunes and podcasting and just every day, like it's, we're just scratching the surface. And some people might say, well, then if there's not that many people doing it, Maybe this isn't something that I should do, but I look at it the other way. I look at it as like, look, if there's only so many people doing it right now, a small portion of the population or, you know, more people are coming into listening to podcasts right now than ever before, there's all this other potential of people who have yet to even discover us. So that's why it's so important that we're there so that you can be there when they do discover podcasting, they can find your show you know, quote unquote show and start listening to, to, to you and start following you. So breaking away from podcasting for just a quick moment, the way things are going right now, where do you see the chiropractic profession finding itself in the next 20 years? Oh man, I have to pause on that. Um, I'm going to throw the question back at you. I mean, I, how, have, have you asked that question on this podcast before? Every episode. <laughs> Sounds like a branded question. Okay. Um, <laughs> could I ask you this question then? I'm going to throw another one. Sure. What are the, what are the most com what's the most common answer that you hear? Oh, man. Everyone says something different. You know, I, I think, you know, from, from my positioning in the whole matter, um, people ask me, like, you, you know, where do I see the profession also? And I say that, you know, we really have to harness the young chiropractic soul and we really have to take care of the future chiropractor. We can't worry about the chiropractor that's already been bought and sold or lost and, you know, confused. We have to really cherish the future of chiropractic and take care of those future chiropractors, the young ones. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree that like the, I'm, I'm concerned. Like I'll, I'll put it out there. I am concerned the, and the, where, and this is probably not going to be the popular answer is that I'm concerned that there's so much dichotomy in what we do as chiropractors. Um, and then because of the dichotomy and I find that there's, a, there is, I, I can I have a very hard time with doctors throwing doctors under the bus. Um, and so I don't think that, I think that we have a bleak future if, and I mean, I try to keep these things positive by the way, so this is, <laughs> but I see there's a bleak future if we can't come together as a profession, you know, if we can't find some common ground and support each other, because, you know, there's, medics are already trying to take away what we have, you know, they've been doing it for years and they're trying to take away, I mean, I fought for subluxation, I fought like my wife and I, we fought for subluxation in Alberta. We went up against the board. I can't tell you how many fines we paid, but we paid a lot of fines. And um, we became a target, um, but we fought. And I don't think there's enough chiropractors right now who are fighting for chiropractic versus fighting other chiropractors. I don't know if that's the popular answer. Yeah, and I get it too. And I, I, I've, I've breathed those same words out of my mouth before. And I think that we have a lot of uh, 
in-house cleaning to do and we have a lot of uh family uh <laughs> family you know balance to make within the tribes and i do think that chiropractic has a very promising future if we can just get over the confusion of what the other person is doing and kind of focus on how we can be better versions of ourselves. yeah i agree and you know a new leadership would be would be and i see a new leadership there is a tide of change and new leadership you know people like yourself jim like what you're doing is bring, I believe you're bringing us together, right? I mean, that was part of the purpose of the Chiropractic Philanthropist podcast was to bring us together, not have docs feel less isolated. But I mean, I, I see that. And um, yeah, there is a tide of change in the leadership. And so even though my answer is, you know, it can be bleak, I don't think that's, I don't think that's entirely what's going to happen. Well, let's uh, go back to the, the influence of marketing and media a little bit. And um what what uh what do you like to do to market yourself and get more influence in the the different channels of communication that you're on? Great question. <laughs> so, um, what do I do? You know, I don't think it's even relevant for me to say what's what I do because I built it. So I can just send an email out and and I can market by my email. I can do a Facebook Live. I can. I have a Facebook ads team, you know, I have a many chat ad, you know, team, uh, like, so I don't think I'm really relevant to a lot of what other doctors are doing now or trying to do. Um, but if I was to start over again, if I was to do go back, I would, I would look at two things. One would be email. So there's always two traffic sources. I, I help clients with in the beginning and there's going to be, that's what you need for any funnel, but funnel, call your practice a funnel if you like. I mean, you want to get people into your practice so that you're going to have an email list to do that, which should be built and nurtured. And then you have a um, social media content strategy. So some sort of, we call it like a show. So quote unquote, a show. So like you have a show, Jim, I have a show. Uh, Doctors who have a show are typically the ones who are able to create social media content. They can repurpose that content. It's on, on most cases, if it's not, if it's posted correctly it's not it's evergreen content meaning it's out there for good um and so that would be the two ways that i would be looking at marketing as a modern day like chiropractor and if i was i was you know and i didn't want to do a lot of screenings or you know boots to the boots to the pavement kind of stuff um i would be looking at social consistent social media content and email marketing yeah, one of the things that you said there was, uh, I think you said doing Facebook Lives, and this is probably a little bit selfish question for me to you, is do you think the space is getting a little too clogged up to have prominence in that, that arena right now? Um, no, no. I mean, you, so, and I, I speak about this to, to clients all the time, is that we, we need to stop asking how many people are watching and following us and all those things. It's not about how many, it's about who is watching us, who is, you know, engaging, who is like, is that proper grammar? (laughs) Who are um, like who it's more like, so if I did a Facebook live and I had 200 views versus someone else who has 2000, the only thing that I'm concerned about is who actually watched that video and how I impacted them. I don't care if it's 200, I don't care if it's 2000. I know that I impacted someone when I, when I, when I did that, um, when I did that live. Uh, so I think a lot of docs, we just need to start asking a different question. It's, it's the question is not how many, but how, but who is, well, you know, every time I watch your content, I get takeaways. Um, and that's how I think that we've developed such a, a style and a system is because I've studied what you've done on your lives. I've studied what Tristan does on his lives. I've studied what the happy, healthy guys do. I study, I mean, I just watch Barb Eaton. I watch everybody out there that's producing high quality content. I I watch what Matthew Loop is doing out there. And, you know, each person has their like strategies and their, you know, bullet points that they go over. But I think every time I watch what you do, Ed, you always stay so real to people and you give people an opportunity to realize that they can do that too. Yes, absolutely. And it's consistent content, right? Like just keep putting stuff out there. That's valuable. Yeah, consistency is the the way that we knew that we were going to start bridging into the market heavy is 
I watch what people are doing. I'm like, you know what? They go once or twice a week. I'm going to go five times a week. I'm going to go seven times a week. I'm going to do three a day. I'm going to exhaust people with content to the point that they realize that we're here to stay. <laughs> Until they start unfriending you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I love when people unfriend me. I'm like Billy DeMoss. That means I can friend somebody else that wants to see everything I do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, Ed. You're on a desert island. You can only have one social media platform to stay engaged with your audience. Which one do you pick? Well, it's it, it, well, social media. That's a tough one. Can I say? Can I say podcasting? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> that is, that's so social it, media. I it, it is social media. I guess you could say, right? Yeah. Um, I guess when I, when you say social media, sometimes I think you know LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest. Um, so yeah, I would be podcasting. I, I, you know, and I, I think this might resonate with all docs who are listening too. Is like we all have our zone. So you know, there's some people who are really great on video. I don't do a ton of video. Um, there's some people who are really great on audio, and I do a lot of audio. Uh, you know, there's some people who are really great writers. Um, it's painful to write for me. So if I could choose one thing, I would just have a podcast, and that's all I would do is just take my phone out hit record on my roadie app and I would record my podcast for the day. And that would be the one thing that I would use to communicate with the world. It's a pretty smart answer. <laughs> <laughs> See, I would choose YouTube, but a lot of people don't really consider that social media either, but it is when you think about it. It depends on where, where and who you want to list. Like, like, you know, clients of mine who, who are selling products, so if you had a product, um, then I would suggest YouTube, or it might be a second phase in terms of their marketing strategy. Is like, if you have a product, you should be on YouTube. Like if you know, um, because people go to YouTube, they're shopping. Most typically, they're shopping. They're looking for something. So I, I actually bought a car based on what I found on YouTube. I went to YouTube. I searched, you know, hey, reviews on this vehicle. I watched a few vehicle reviews. Got I got a link to actually a dealer who was selling one of these cars, and then I ended up buying one and flying and going and picking it up. So that's the kind of person that's on YouTube. Um, I want to communicate with doctors. I see doctors all over Instagram, and they're all over Facebook. Um, I don't even think they all have a LinkedIn account, but they're not on LinkedIn. Um, and then they're listening to podcasts. So that's where I would be. So. Let, let, let me get on the crystal ball with you like you like to do with people. <laughs> and uh, what's the next up and coming emerging uh, social media platform that people should uh, have on their radar? Instagram. Instagram. Like, and, and here, this, so I, so people might say, well, you know, um, they'll probably go and check out my Instagram account and they'll see that I have a thousand people and I've done 60 posts. <laughs> Like I am by no means an Instagram expert. I am, I don't, and the reason I don't teach Instagram cor courses or help gu guide people who are even clients in Instagram is because I have no results nor experience in it. But I can foresee that people are in droves moving from Facebook to Instagram and especially Instagram TV. So if there was one place in the future and if I can figure it out or have someone help me figure it out, uh, it would be Instagram. You know what really gets me scratching my head is when I'm on Instagram, I'll find someone who has no posts and like 5,000 followers. <laughs> Those are paid followers or yeah, something. Yeah, right? something fishy's yeah. going on. <laughs> yeah, they're not relevant. I mean, I I don't, I still don't, I, I, like, I mean, I can post something, like I'll go into Instagram, post a couple posts, and I actually lose followers. So I can't figure it yeah, out. Yeah, same, same here. Like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I have, I'm going to, you know, I'm, but again, I'm not really relevant to a lot of people who are listening because I can just, I'll probably go pay someone to just figure this stuff out for me. <laughs> and, um, but I would, I would definitely be looking at Instagram TV. There are some docs by the way, who are, who, um, I'm following, uh, you know, Dr. Jason Dean, for example, who have been using Instagram TV and they're making their mark. It's a place where you could really plant your flag right now because there's not a lot of people who are doing it. Yeah, that's something we're going to have to look into also, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about you. What kind of things do you like to listen to or read? Do you like audiobooks or do you like textbooks? Um, 
So great. I, I agree. I mean, honestly, like, so there's so much, you kind of mentioned this, there's so many lives, there's so much content, there's so much distraction, there's so much like this noise out there right now. Um, the only people, I only follow two people and I, I don't really, I'm not really focused on a lot of Garrett's stuff right now, like Garrett J. White, but with, you know, Warrior, I mean, they put a ton of content out. Um, but I would do hours and hours of content every week, just digesting their content every week for the last 12 months. Um, and the other is Russell. So anything he has out on, by the way, I pay a lot of money for Russell's mentorship, but you know what? You can go to YouTube and it pretty much all of it's free on YouTube, (laughs) just so you know. So, um, so you, you know, anything that Russell puts out there, I listen to his podcast daily. I listen to, um, our watches, his videos as soon as I can. Um, I stay inside of our inner circle. Um, like they do trainings, campfire videos all the time or, um, chats, they call them. Um, so anything that Russell is putting out, I find if I start to watch, read, listen to a lot of other people, I almost puts me in a place of paralysis where it's like oh, information overload. Have you ever felt that before? Yeah. You know, early on, I, I really focused on following John D. Martini mm. and, uh, his stuff was so relevant, but you know, he has like a third eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean it's it's like i just want to distill it down to two people you know if it's life marriage business it's garrett J. white wake up warrior and it's relevant to women too i think and then you know if it's if it's basically you know media content social media i, I follow and follow russell on everything yeah i'm a gary v guy um i mm. could i could you know straight tap myself from the time i woke up in the morning to the time i you know, decided I wanted to unplug from life and I could just go straight Gary V all day and I just hammer the, I just go Gary V style. You know, I think, you know, between Russell and Gary V, I think that those guys are the, the up and coming, like, you know, powers. Yeah, absolutely. So this pretty much wraps up our episode. Where can people find more information on your podcast or your trainings? Give us some uh, websites. Now, this this is an interesting question because <laughs> probably in the last two months, a lot of people have just I've, – I've even changed my bio on Facebook to say the guy that is hard to find. Um, because And yet people find me. So uh, you can head to the, um, the chiropracticphilanthropist.com so you can listen to our podcast. So we have over 300 podcasts. I believe it's over 300 now. Um, you can go to the chiropractors, the chiropractors laptop lifestyle.com. Uh, you can learn a little bit more about what we do. And like when I say a little, it's just pretty superficial, high level stuff on that website. But there's also a contact form. And the last part of this is you can just simply follow me on Facebook. If you want to follow me on Facebook, um, whenever we're doing webinars, uh, you know, like we have a webinar next Tuesday, like we do them pretty much every four weeks. You can jump on one of those webinars, ask me a question, I'll give you an answer, and I will guide you as as much as I possibly can. So we always uh, give the opportunity to all of our guests to uh, add anything that we didn't ask you that you might want to talk to our audience about. Maybe can I ask you a question? Please. So where do you see Cairo Hustle? So I was thinking about this today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn, turn the chair around. So <laughs> <laughs> once I interviewed someone once and off of mic, they asked me this question. I'm going to ask you this question. You ready? You ready for the question? Yep. Okay. They said to me, when you're done interviewing all of the, you know, famous chiropractors, all of the chiropractors, you know, that you possibly can, what are you going to do? You know, that's a really good question for me. I'm sure Luke will have a little bit different answer, so we'll both jump in. Um, I'll let Luke go first. Um, So we're done interviewing every famous chiropractor that ever was. I would say we start interviewing the students and start making them famous next. Beautiful. Good answer. You know, my answer quickly is that's what we're doing right now, Ed, is we're uh, bringing on student chapters of Cairo Hustle, and they're going to be sharing our content for a 90-day stint. And as soon as they graduate with passing grades of sharing content, we're going to turn them into little podcasters and start a podcast on every campus. Yeah, beautiful. 
Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I remember when I was at, and this is someone who was really prominent in our profession. I won't say who. When they asked me that question, it was kind of in a sarcastic way, um, and I said, "I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible to to run out of." you know, relevant and important chiropractors, because I think everyone has a voice. Um, every chiropractor has a voice and every chiropractor has a story. So, I, and I think that's the same for you guys. You'll never run out of relevant and important content. No, you know, Ed, I think that there's so many people out there that they might not be positioned right now, but they might be positioned in six months. And that's when they're going to have their PR guy or their office manager is going to send me a message and say, hey, would you mind having this person on your show? They've been blasting through the, the stratosphere with Amped and nobody knows who they are, but they're seeing 600 a week after two months of practice. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. There's those guys out there all over the place. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps up this episode of Cairo Hustle. Ed, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show with us today. My pleasure. Yeah, Ed, uh, I just, I, I'll keep on following what you do because I know you're a trendsetter and I appreciate the friendship. Thank you. And uh, we want you to enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. All right. See you, Ed. Bye. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.